What's up guys, my name is Eric, and in this video we're going to talk about the Meihang Tong, also known as the X-Printer XP-DT-108B. If that is not a mouthful of printer, I don't know what is. In this video we're going to go over my initial thoughts of the printer. I did a unboxing of it. I set and tested compatibility with eBay, Amazon, Mac, PC. Tested it with four by six shipping labels and also Amazon FN SKUs. If you haven't already known, I have a lot of printers. I've always kind of been fascinated with printer qualities, printer types, and I've sold a lot of printers. I bought and sold a lot of printers. I purchased it off of Amazon for $97.19. I think it was the cheapest thermal 4x6 label printer that I could find on Amazon at the time. And I haven't owned any of them with this design where it's pop open the top, it's square, fan fold in the back. I've never owned one like this, so I wanted to get one. So when I get the Rolo, I have something to compare it to, kind of in the same product class. The listing I bought it under was Meihang Tong. There's probably different flavors out there. It looks like it was an Alibaba uh, private label product from a bunch of different companies. And it did not have good reviews. And I kind of, I think I figured it out why. Because after I did my unboxing, I got really, really frustrated with the printer. And, and we get the red light error. I actually opened up a return on Amazon. I put it to the side for a day. I came back to it a day later, gave it another chance. I found out what the main issue was. And then I tested for compatibility, Mac, Windows, Amazon product SKUs, four by six shipping labels. The whole nine yards. This is a 203 DPI printer. And if you don't know what DPI is, it's dots per inch. It's a metric feature for the printers for clarity when it comes to really, really small text. And I think Amazon actually recommends a 300 DPI printer for product SKUs as a minimum requirement. And this is a 203 DPI printer, but you might be surprised how they turn out. We got a lot of good, we got a lot of bad. Um, we're first gonna go over what I like about the printer the good, and then we'll go over the bad. First thing that stuck out of this printer was the price. The good thing is that it's under $100, so it's under that $100 price point. You're getting a brand spanking new printer. It's like factory, straight up, right out of the box, as new as it can get. And I know new products are a thing for some people. Me personally, it doesn't make a difference, new or used. I like to troubleshoot and figure stuff out myself, but maybe for you, a new product is the way to go. So that sub 100 price point, I really, really like. Another good thing, but it's not a great thing, is that it does have a one year replacement or refund warranty. At least that's what it says on Amazon. I ne I've never personally claimed a warranty from this company. After the Amazon, what, the three month period, I don't know how you would really claim a warranty, reach out to the company maybe. And while we're on warranty, most printers, other printers, like real company printers, like Brother Zebra, Dymo, even Rolo, but Rolo is really a private label company. But anyways, they offer at least two year warranty. Usually if you went with another company, you'll also get a better customer support experience because this is like a weird one off private label. I don't think they're going to walk you through setup or understand like how to set it up with this or how to set up with that. You would be stuck with me to do tutorials for you or figuring it out on your own. So the, the tutorials don't really exist online yet. If you're tech savvy, it might not be a big deal to you. If you want something to follow step by step from the manufacturer website, that might be something to think about that this printer's not going to offer you. We're going to do a short interruption. Take two seconds, gently tap the like button. I would really appreciate it, thanks. Uh, a huge thing that I really, really liked about this printer is the non-proprietary label design. As you've heard from my Dymo roasting, I really don't like proprietary labels. The fact that this one doesn't use proprietary labels, you could just get the free ups.com or fedex.com labels mailed to you and you can use them with this printer. Another good thing about this printer is it does work with Mac or PC. On the Amazon listing, it advertises that it only works with PC, it only works with Windows. However, tinkering for a little bit, I did find a driver that works fine for Mac. It prints clear. I will make a tutorial for that video in the future. Another good thing about this printer is it prints fast. It's this newer printer design with low DPI. The more dots per inch, the denser the image, the slower it's normally gonna print. So a Dymo prints at 300 DPI, so it's gonna print a little bit slower. This is at 203 DPI, and with that lower DPI, you are gonna get a faster print although the image might not necessarily be as clear or crisp as a 300 DPI printer, 
but that's the trade-off. Speed for clarity and 203 DPI is the lowest requirement for shipping labels. So that's usually why manufacturers make shipping printers with a 203 DPI because you get the quality that you need for shipping. You get the speed all in one package. The next thing that I really like is kind of weird actually, and that's the way that it beeps, the noises that it makes. I don't know why, but it has like an R2-D2 electronic -y beeping feel. I don't know, that's kind of weird. It's a personal preference thing. I like, this is like the best sounding printer I've had out of all the printers that I own. I like the sound of this one the best. It might just be me, it might, the beeps might annoy you, but that's what the beeps are. And last but not least, the things that I like about this printer is the easy to clean design. The fact that they designed it with the thermal print head on the top, it's easy to get to, is just a good design because you're supposed to clean and maintain these. If you're not printing complete lines, it's usually your print head needs to be cleaned. Take a little swab with some rubbing alcohol on it, 50 to 91% isopropyl. Clean off that print head once a month, you'll be good to go. Now that we went on through all the good, let's get into some of the bad, some of the things I noticed about this printer that I don't really like. First and foremost is it's made in China. Uh, just look at those instructions right on the front. There's the bottom of the printer. Everything's in Chinese. It came from Zuhai Hangquan Barcode Equipment Co. Build on it is not, you can tell it's not high quality build with the plastic. Just look at the flex in the guides there. I mean, you're not really gonna be flexing the guides, but just to show you, it's not the greatest quality. Another thing that was bad about the printer is this is the driver that they mailed me. It's a banana CD, CDR, so it's a burnt copy of the driver. And most computers don't even have CD drives these days. So how are we gonna install the driver with this? That banana CD was absolutely useless. It came with a user manual, and if you actually open up the user manual and look, a picture of a printer that isn't even ours. How good of instructions are these when it's a printer that we don't even own? I don't know. Installation was not easy. I'm going to have to make tutorials on it in order to help people out there. Just based off of the Amazon reviews, people are having trouble calibrating and installing this printer on Windows and Mac. So that's what I'm here for. I'm gonna make some videos to make the whole product experience a little bit easier. Although the company needs to be doing this for you. So another thing I don't like about this printer is the power port. It's this three prong proprietary port that goes into the back of the printer right here rather than just using a barrel plug like Zebra, Dymo. I'm not a fan of the design. It's worth mentioning, if you were to lose the power supply, I don't know where you would get a new one from. I don't even know what that's called. If you're an electronics guy and you know what that's called, please let me know in the comments. Maybe it's not proprietary. Maybe it's actually something that a lot of people use. I just don't know. I couldn't figure out what it was called. So I hope I don't lose my charger. And the last thing that I don't like about this printer is that it is a fan fold design, meaning that the labels have to sit outside of the printer behind it and it takes up this much counter space rather than just this much counter space for an all enclosed printer. If you are printing out of your car, I've done some van life travel in the past, car travel, and having all of that is just too big and cumbersome. If you were to go into a hotel, you'd have to put it in a bag rather than just, I don't know. For me, fan fold design is inferior. I personally like the all enclosed design, but if you're at a warehouse environment and you have the counter space and you're not moving the printer at all, fan fold would be fine for you. It's just my own personal opinion. That's why I threw it in there because this is all just a personal review anyways. Those are my thoughts on the printer. Overall, I can't really recommend it or not. This is kind of just first impressions because I don't know the longevity of it. I don't know how reliable this thing will be. There are some comments on Amazon saying that they've ran through 100,000 prints and it's still printing fine. I personally have never done it, so I can't say yes or no. Although it has its own minor issues that I have with it, but I think the price point and the design is there to make it better than the Dymo 4XL, in my personal opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you've used this printer before or something similar to it, if it's been frustrating for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.